Hello, everyone, and inside today's Locked On Canadians, the Montreal Canadiens are drafting fifth overall. Kent Hughes has who he's looking for, the fans who have their looking for. I have a poll out on Twitter. We're going to check the results and more inside today's show. Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 841 of Locked on Canadians. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Of course, we are your daily Montreal Canadiens podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast. Now, where you get your team every single day of the week, wherever you find your daily podcast, or on YouTube. Coming up later this week, I've got another guest on. We're going to talk mock drafts and other things. Laura and I have plenty else planned the back half of this week with the Canadians knowing where they are drafting in the upcoming NHL draft at the end of June. I am, of course, your host. I am Scott Mala. I am flying solo tonight. My co-host is unavailable, so you are stuck with me for better or for worse. And let's just get right into things. The Montreal Canadiens are picking top five in the upcoming NHL draft. We know that staying in that spot is a good thing. We absolutely like that they are staying in that spot right now because they were most likely to move down spots in the upcoming NHL draft, and they did not. So guess what? That's good news here. And as I look through some of the quotes from last night, the biggest thing here is there's a lot coming from Kent Hughes. He had a press conference after the draft lottery was done and over with. Obviously, the Canadians hoped they would move up here. And the biggest thing here is I am looking at a quote from Ken Hughes. This is from at Habs in high heels on Twitter. She obviously covers any Canadians press conference has all the quotes you need. Habs GM Ken Hughes on the quality of the organization are looking for and players they will draft hockey sense, character and compete level. Naturally that kind of uh, kind of worried fans a little bit there because you hear character and you hear compete level and all those things. And a lot of fans think back to hearing the same thing from Mark Bergevin. And understandably, I think that has some people a little bit panicked here. And while I understand it, I don't fully agree with the necessary panic here. I have seen a lot of people worrying that they're going to pick and just make the worst possible choice here at fifth overall. And I'm not really sure what in Kent Hughes's short, and yes, I'm going to say short, it's been just over a year now, year and a half, let's say, as GM of the Montreal Canadiens. And I don't really know what would be causing the distrust in this organization to think they're not going to pick the best possible player there. And some people are going to point to, well, they shouldn't have picked Slavkovsky or Mayshar is a bust. And to that, I say, Yuri Slavkovsky got injured playing poor, on a poor Montreal Canadiens team. He was starting to find his game when he got injured, and you cannot help that. Philip Machar played on a very underachieving OHL team. He was far from the issue with the Kitchener Rangers, and quite honestly, was one of the most noticeable players on that team, along with Hunter Bruskevich, who I watched the games when I had the opportunity to. I'm not quite sure where this whole thought process of the Canadians under Kent Hughes are going to do what Mark Bergevin did. I don't think Mark Bergevin would have picked Lane Hudson. I don't think they would have picked Philip Mashar either. I actually don't think they would have picked Uri Slavkovsky. I think they probably would have picked Simon Nemitz, to be quite honest with you. You got to let Kent Hughes cook a little bit here. I, I'm not going to put my full faith in a front office because any small amount of skepticism is a good thing because no front office is infallible. Even the good ones are not infallible and the bad ones aren't always as at fault for their, some are I'm looking at you, Peter Shirelli and Pierre Dorian under Eugene Melnick with Pierre McGuire, but I'm not worried about it. Cause there's other quotes they mentioned too, is that, we're going. I think we're going to get a really good hockey player at five. It's a talented draft group, and we're confident we're going to get a very talented player. They mentioned they're looking 
for best player available based on long-term potential. That's that could be anybody. And I don't know why there is this doom and gloom immediately here. It, it, it's kind of depressing that, Hey, the Canadians stayed in their spot against the odds. Yeah. Chicago won and we didn't get Connor Bedard, but there was always, that was always going to happen. Some other team was more likely to get Connor Bedard than the Montreal Canadians. People are writing off whatever pick that is going to be made before it's even been made. And I feel like that's unfair because there are great options. And we are going to talk about those options in our next couple segments here on the show. And I want to just, you know, quell this right now is that give it time. We don't know who the Canadians have interest in. Some people said they have no interest in Mitch Kov. Other people said, I think it's a perfect fit. We don't know. We, we do not know. People are hurting their own feelings on things that we don't have answers to yet. And that seems a little bit ridiculous to me, even for this early in the off season. And before we get any further, yes, I saw the article. No, they should not trade fifth overall for Pierre-Luc Dubois. We're just going to, we're throwing that right out the window now. Absolutely not. I look at what this Canadians front office has done in, play, in terms of player development in the last year and seeing how some of these players have started to reach their next levels here and they're only going to get better. I think you're going to see a great season out of Uri Slavkovsky next year. I think Philip Mashar in the AHL is going to be a very good player. Owen Beck's likely going to be back in junior, but we're seeing more and more of these players progress in great ways. And I'm willing to trust this front office more than I was the last one at the end of things that they know what they are doing here in terms of how they're going to develop these players and how they're going to turn them into that next big thing for the Canadians. They're not going to get an NHL player at fifth overall right away. They're not going to get Bedard Fantilli who could step into the NHL next year and be ready. And that's okay because this rebuild is taking time. Ken Hughes is good. It's okay with slow playing this. He wants to make sure this is done right because if you try to rush a rebuild, you force things that aren't going to work and you end up in the worst possible situation. And that only makes things worse overall for there. I'm just, I'm kind of begging everyone here is that we don't know what the Canadians are going to do yet. We do not. I don't think they're going to trade that pick. I think they will trade the Florida pick at some point, but the, the panic about this is too much. There are very good players here. Ask any of the scouts we've had on the show. Talk to Hattie, talk to Sebastian. Hi, go talk to Tony Ferrari, David St. Louis, anybody in the scouting community on Twitter, and they will tell you Basically, after the top two, a lot of things can happen. And inside that top 10, depending on whose top 10 it is, there are a lot of very talented players. I am not worried about the Montreal Canadiens not finding one of them. They might go safe, but I think they are going to find a good player in there. And I'm not going to hurt my feelings worrying about that until I know what they're actually going to do. And speaking of what they're going to do, I put out a poll on Twitter earlier. I asked who fan, who we as Canadians fans would want to see Montreal draft. We have results on that. We're going to discuss that. And the big winner on the poll, surprisingly, coming up in our next segment. But first, one of our show sponsors today is the folks at Indeed. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. We streamline hiring with powerful tools that you find that help you find matched candidates. And with Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed data in the United States. Candidates you invite to apply are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in a search, according to the U.S. Indeed data. And Indeed will help you get one step closer to the hire by immediately matching you with quality candidates. So start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your post on Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash locked on. That is Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. We are back here at Locked On Canadians. And if you are following us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians, you should definitely be following us there because that is the smart thing to do. 
folks, I put out a poll earlier and I don't put out a lot of polls. I, at least I don't think I put out a lot of polls. I put it out this morning asking, have your say. Habs fans, who do you want at fifth overall? And on that list was Mitavi Michkov, Will Smith, Zach Benson, or other leave a reply. And the thing about uh, this, I didn't put Leo Carlson on there just because I did not think he would be available. I am still in trusting that he will go third overall in this draft, but I have been surprised before and strange things have happened. So we will talk about Leo Carlson and a couple of other things in the final segment. But the results, as of right now, there's two hours left in the poll, but I don't think this is going to skew too much. Leading this poll with 56.3% of the votes was Maytavi Michkov. Will Smith finished second at 37.4, Zach Benson at 3.2, and other 3.2. Uh, some people don't mind Leo Carlson if he drops, but a lot of people really would prefer Matevi Michkov. And my thought is here, Will Kent Hughes pull the trigger? And I hope he does. We've talked about this a lot in passing here, but he Michkov is now the name that is getting the most attention, the most traction amongst Habs fans. Because Will Smith's under-18 performance for the U.S. is boosting him up a lot of charts. Recency bias is a thing. I admit that. I like Will Smith. I liked him before U18 started. I like him even more afterwards. However... U18s did not feature Michkov or any of the other Russian players because of the IIHF's current ban on uh, Russian and Belarusian players in their tournaments due to the ongoing war in Ukraine. And it's tough to say because Michkov led this tournament before, I believe it was the Ivan Halinka, in scoring over two points per game. He's a freakishly talented player. And Ken Hughes said they're going to look at all the avenues around there you know, in terms of that contract, it goes for another three years in Russia. Will they be able to bring him over there? Can they figure out a way to get him here before then? There is no KHL NHL transfer agreement. There are no reasons why teams are beholden to these things. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, players in the KHL can buy out their contract with their own money to go be, to go join the team that has drafted them or to go into free agency, as I understand it. At least that's how it used to be. I could be wrong at this point, but I look at a player like Mitchkov. You have to wait three years. That much is true. He, he will be 21 years old when he would be able to join the Montreal Canadiens, if they pick him at fifth overall. And based on the takes from Scout, I shouldn't call them takes. I should say the opinions and reports from Scout's think that he will drop out of that top five spot there, that he will fall out of the top five. Some team is going to have the patience and make this work. And my thought is, why not the Montreal Canadiens? You are begging for a next level superstar for, we keep saying Karel Kaprizov, or at least I keep saying Karel Kaprizov. He turned the wild around and admittedly, they are now paying for the sins of a previous ownership group with the buyouts of Suter, Parise, et cetera. But there is no denying that Kirill Kaprizov is an elite, all-world NHL superstar. He's an absolute freak on the ice. He has in reinvented what the Wild can look like when he is on the ice. When he is not there, they are a different team. Now, imagine you are the Montreal Canadiens. And this comes from Tony at 10K Rinks, and I'm glad he mentioned this. Imagine you have Cole Caulfield and Maytavi Michkov on the same line or on the same power play, or whatever. You have a guy who sees the ice so well and can create opportunities. People in this draft, before this whole Russian invasion of the Ukraine began, Mitchkov has talent that is comparable to Connor Bedard's. He is the only person in this draft class with comparables to Connor Bedard in terms of pure skill on the ice. The Canadians are begging, screaming, crying, throwing up for somebody like that. I love Owen Beck, and I love Joshua Waugh's prospects. I like Riley Kidney a lot. I like the pieces they have here. They do not have somebody who can do what Matevi Michkov can do for a franchise. And the thing is, you wait those three years, you clear off some of those other contracts, you graduate some more of those prospects on their entry-level deals, you bring Mitchkov in, and you have Suzuki in his prime, you have Caulfield in his prime, you have that defensive group 
aged a few years from NHL experience with Caden Gooley and Arbor Jack Guy and Jordan Harris and potentially Jaden Strubel and Logan Mayu, et cetera. You have the opportunity to create something very special with a core there. And they'll all be on their entry level deals. And you can immediately turn that around into something. By that point, they should be a playoff team. They should hopefully be pushing into the playoffs by that point, by the time that he is ready. And when he is ready, you parachute him in like Tavo Teravine and coming over for the Chicago Blackhawks in the middle of a cup run, like Kirill Kaprizov coming over like this, like that, like William Nylander coming and joining the Leafs, et cetera. You can bring him in and he's just that extra shot right in the arm. He is that double dose of pre-workout on leg day that this Canadians team can use to get over the hump. And Ken Hughes says they want to talk about character compete and all these other things. They didn't mention skill, but they want skill in this team. I look at the way Martin St. Louis coaches this team where he encourages creativity and wants that skill to breathe in players. And we see it when the team is healthy, admittedly not often this year, but you see it in a lot of these players. And you're going to take a guy like Mitch Cobb who can do just ridiculous things with the puck on his stick. If he is their fifth overall, I I am I I love Will Smith, and we are going to talk about him and a couple other people in the back half of the show here. But I look at what Mitchkov can do for this team, and I am fully on board with saying that is who I would pick at fifth overall. If he is there, if he doesn't get picked up by Columbus or San Jose, who might be willing to also wait that time, you should be running up to the podium to say Mitchkov, put him in a Cavs uniform. And I just, I cannot understate how excited I would be for that. Yes, you're just waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting, but it's that payoff. It's like you go to a restaurant and you order the most expensive, tenderest steak on the menu and you wait for it because they are, they are slow roasting that in the oven or whatever. And it comes out and you, put, and you cut into it and it is just thick, juicy, and it's the best thing you've ever eaten. That is what it is like waiting for Mitchkov. And I admittedly, you know, wasn't on board with that just because I didn't think he would fall to fifth overall. I thought for sure someone is going to pick him in that top four and they'd be silly not to. If that opportunity falls, and I think, and I have every reason to believe it will because hockey is hockey after all. If another team picks up on that, I am very worried that no matter how good the Canadians pick at fifth overall is, that Mitchkov might be that level above that, and they will regret it for a long, long, long time. But there are other good names of potentially available fifth overall. They were in that poll. I got some other replies. We're going to dig into those all coming up next. But first, as I mentioned earlier, today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Have you ever been stressed out trying to buy tickets? I was trying to buy tickets for a wrestling show in Toronto. It is the absolute worst feeling in the world, wondering if you're going to be able to get to the show there. It shouldn't be that way. And guess what? Game time is fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for all the fun you're about to have. You can go through the Game Time app, see what is around there. We've got concerts. It is the spring and summer season. Cross is going on. There's going to be maybe some hockey in your city if you're one of those lucky few. We're not that far off from football season, but concert show season is in full swing. You get flash deals and last-minute tickets, and it's easy to find and buy tickets for any of these events there. It is the place to get your last-minute tickets, and they have the game-time guarantee, which means you always get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same section and row for less – Game time will credit you for 110% of the difference. And you get images of your seat before you can buy, so you know exactly what you are getting. So make sure you snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We are back here at Locked on Canadians. So as I mentioned, we, and by we, I mean I, pulled you the greater Habs extended universe to see who would you want to fit overall. As we just spent several minutes talking about, y'all want Mitchkov. And I, I wanted Mitchkov. I do want Mitchkov, truly. But also on that list were two other names that I think are of big interest to the Canadians. That was Zach Benson and Will Smith. 
and also some other replies from other folks that maybe think, what about Leo Carlson there? We've talked about Will Smith a lot on this podcast. We've talked about it with Tony Farrar. We've talked a little bit about it with Sebastian High and other people. Will Smith is a highly skilled player. And yeah, you're going to wait a little bit. He's going to go to college for at least a year and develop those skills. But I look at what Kent Hughes says in terms of wanting hockey IQ and compete and all these other things. And I look at what Hattie Kalakash said on Twitter last night. It's Zach Benson to a T. And Zach Benson was someone we've also talked with Tony about. He is such a smart player on a very good team, but he is standing out on his own. He is a leader on that team. And he's not playing and he's like, the WHL has Connor Bedard in it. That's not an easy game to play. I, I really wouldn't be opposed to the idea of Zach Benson. If Will Smith goes in the top four, which I think is, he might go top three. Rightly or wrongly, that is not for me to decide. I am not the end-all, be-all judge for NHL draft prospects. If I was, I would have a much fancier crown and I would have a new a new title on this podcast here that says dude who knows stuff on here. So I love the idea of Zach Benson. I love the idea of Will Smith too, but someone pointed out what if Leo Carlson drops, it'll go Bedard. It'll go Fantilli. What if it goes Smith, then Mitchkov or Mitchkov, then Smith or whomever talking with Jay Foster of lockdown blue jackets He's kind of leaning towards the idea. He would he wants Leo Carlson. But as we all know, Jarmo Kekalainen is a wild card when it comes to the NHL draft. He has never shied away from making a pick that makes you go, huh, really? And then it kind of works out. Igor Chinnikov being one of them, Pierre-Luc Dubois, etc. If he goes off the board and, say, takes Will Smith or takes Oliver Moore or Zach Benson or whomever, maybe in Jarmo's mind, and Carlson falls to the Montreal Canadiens. I think you got you have to do that. Um, even if Mitchkov is there, and let's say for whatever reason it goes Smith, Benson, and then you have Carlson and you have Mitchkov at fifth overall. I'm probably taking Leo Carlson, not because I don't think Mitchkov is an incredible player, but I think Leo Carlson is a piece that this team needs. Someone who I think could be in the mold of a Kirby Doc. Well, Kirby Doc is still on the team. What's better than one Doc? A paradox. So I love that thought of that Leo Carlson, for whatever reason, because the NHL draft, everything loves to be chaotic. We wa- I watched it in Montreal last year. They picked Slavkowski, and then Nemitz went, then Logan Cooley went, and then Shane Wright went. Shane Wright was supposed to go first overall for over two years, but this draft outside of the top two picks feels like a total crapshoot. And I think outside of the funniest possible thing happening in Chicago, not picking Connor Bedard, which would just be, oh, just the funniest thing in the world. Leo Carlson falling for no reason other than people liked Will Smith's under 18 tournament better is a very real possibility. The options are limitless here. And the biggest thing is with all this, I want to add a caveat. I like Dalibor Dvorsky. I'm not as high on David Reinbacher. I understand the reason why scouts and coaches and all the drafting community is now talking about these players a lot. Dvorsky had also had a very good under 18. If the Habs, if Florida didn't make the playoffs and the Habs were picking in that like 13, 14 range for Florida's pick might have been, I would have taken Dvorsky there all day long. I do not like Dvorsky at a top five pick. I don't. And I like him as a player. I do not like David Reinbacher as a top five pick or even a top 10 pick in that current place. And if I'm the Canadians, unless I get a package I can't ignore, I'm not trading down either. I'd rather take the options that are there. Their options are limitless, though. They can do so much with this spot. It's just a matter of, will they go for that speed and that superstar? Do they go for that Will smith Mitchkov type? Do they go for Leo Carson if he is there? Do they go for Zach Benson, who seems like he's just going to be a really tenacious, very good NHL player? <laughs> Ken Hughes has his work cut out for him, and I don't envy him in that regard, which is why I am not an NHL GM. That is why I'm a dude who records a podcast while my dog is staring out the window, sadly, because she can't go outside. This upcoming draft has so many opportunities for the Montreal Canadiens. We do not know what they are going to do. We can have a lot of fun 
guessing through things. We absolutely can. I just want everyone, it has been roughly 24 hours at the time of recording this since the draft lottery finished. Everyone take a step back from that ledge. Take a deep breath. We are a month and a half and away from the NHL draft. The combine is in roughly one month. I will hopefully be there with player quotes and everything else. We'll find out so much more about who has talked to which players, what players have talked to which teams, who asked weird questions, etc. There is so much time for things to change day to day to day to day that one day they may be taking Reinbacher. One day they may be taking Dvorsky. One day they might take Colby Barlow. One day they're going to take Zach Benson. Every day it is different. I I am begging everyone. They have not made a decision. They have far from having made a decision yet at this point. So everyone, deep breath, chin up. There's a lot of off season still to go. So deep breaths, everybody. We will be back. Laura and I will be back with more player reviews and everything on Wednesday. I have a very special guest coming up for mock draft special 2.0 for your Friday episode. We were going to be recording that Thursday night. We're going to be having fun doing the mock draft stuff again. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians, LockdownCanadians, gmail.com. If you have questions, concerns, or mailbag questions for the following week, you can follow my host at The Active Sticky. You can follow myself at Scott Matla. Folks, we will see you all next time.